Hi everyone, thank you for joining today. I'm Zainab and I'm happy to host the session today on account structure. Before I begin that, let me tell you a little about myself. I work as an account planner at Google and my day-to-day -day job involves creating account structures, modifying them, improvising on them, setting up campaigns, ad groups, keywords, and all of this. Setting up the right account structure is really at the backbone of making sure that your account is set up for success. Let me draw an analogy to the email inbox. When I think of my emails, I receive a whole lot of emails each day. And if I were to sort through it to find the right email, it's going to be really tough in the times to come. To help me with that, I have labels and filters, which helps me to organize my email inbox such that it's going to be easy for me to pull out any email in future. So with that, let me start on the topic on account structures. I'm going to start sharing my screen so you wouldn't be able to see me, but I hope you have a great learning experience. Thank you. All right, so at the end of this module, what you will be able to do is assess how to structure your AdWords account right. And you should be able to figure out what are the right settings to have in order to serve the more relevant ad to your users. Apart from that, as you see in the picture, you see the reflection of that structure in the water. This is the Taj Mahal. And the beauty of it is that you need to mirror your AdWords account such that it mirrors your website. So really, once you do that, you are making sure that you're covering for everything that you are offering in terms of products or services, but also making sure that it is themed right. Let's move on. In terms of the account composition and settings, let's look at what each thing comprises of. So at the campaign level, what you could do is you could decide on the daily budget that you would like to have. Decide on which countries and languages you would like to target, depending on the audience you want to reach out to. You could decide on the networks that you want to reach out to, the search network or the display network. Now, both these networks do cater to a variety of audience. And it could be somebody who's at the initial stage of researching a product to a person who's actually researching content about something and suddenly sees your ad and is wowed by it and goes ahead and clicks it. So imagine a case where somebody is reading about child abuse on a news site and they see an ad from your charity which talks about saving children from abuse. Viola, there you go, you've got your audience. You could also reach out to different people on different devices. People could be surfing various devices like mobile phones, tablets, laptops, desktops, depending on the time of the day or the situation. So perhaps early morning you're reaching out to somebody who's on their mobile phone or on the go and also somebody during the work hours on their laptops or desktops. Somewhere late evening, it could be mobiles or tablets. You're making sure to capture users across different devices and platforms at all times. You could decide on the start and end dates of your campaign. It could depend on what activity you're running and when it is important. There are other advanced options as well, which you could set at the campaign level, which is the ad scheduling and the ad rotation. Ad scheduling takes care of periods when you think you're getting really good volumes and you want to make sure that you are present at all times and you want to bid high so that you do not miss out on any users. That is ad scheduling, where you are scheduling to run your ad during a certain period and perhaps bidding higher during that time period. It could be ad rotation, where you decide that, okay, there are certain ads which are performing really well for you and you want to rotate according to that. So it could be by clicks, it could be by conversions. At the ad group level, you could set different bids for each ad group. You could advertise different products and services using your preferred targeting method. When I say targeting method, I mean it could be placements, it could be keywords, it could be interest categories, it could be topics. So your audience could be widespread and be interested in different things. And it depends on the target mix that you're trying to reach. You create ad text at the ad group level, which comprises of all the keywords. So the ad text should be a reflection of the keywords that are present in that ad group. Coming to keywords. The keywords need to be really relevant and targeted. 
this is which is going to attract your users. You could set keyword level bids. You could set keyword level landing pages depending on uh, the different products or services that you're trying to message. Let's move on to some of the best practices when you're setting up your account structure. The main aim should be that you need to know what your end goal of advertising is. What is it that you're trying to achieve? Do you want people to join a community? Do you want people to donate? What is it that at the end of it you're trying to achieve? This should be really clear when you're setting up your account. What you could do, your campaign settings. This decides your start and end dates, for example. If you're running a flighted activity, let's say you have tied up with a celebrity or some kind of music concert you're organizing, and you want to make sure that you're capturing users at every stage before the concert starts, maybe when the concert is about to begin, and also later when people are searching for things about that concert of who tied up with the respective charity for it, then you need to make sure that you set the right time period for when your campaign should run. It could be different networks on the search and display network as we discussed earlier. Coming to ad groups. Ad groups, as I said, need to mirror the website structure. So your campaigns and ad groups basically would reflect what you're offering on your website. Once you do this, you would be able to capture the entire user base that you want to reach out to and you're theming it right. You could, at the ad group level, decide on the unique products and services. So each ad group should really reflect different kinds of products and service offerings that you have. We're going to get into more detail further down the slides, but this is just so that you have an overview. At the ad group level, you need to write compelling ads. Really, ads are the face of your organization. So you need to make sure that it's compelling enough and it talks to the keywords that you have set up in that ad group. Because the ad group comprises of a set of keywords and an ad is a reflection of those keywords. Keywords. You need to make sure that you've decided to have a relevant and targeted group of keywords. You might come across thousands of keywords that you could include, but really it boils down to deciding what is best going to capture your respective audience. You need to really think like a user in order to find the keywords, because once you do that, you're going to be able to figure out what is it that your users are searching for and be able to find the right keywords for yourself. In terms of best practices, further down, just discussing it further, you need to ask certain questions to yourself to organize your account best. Ask yourself, who is your target audience? What products or services are being advertised? What are some of the most common terms that people are going to be searching on when they look for you? What are the unique characteristics that are going to separate you from your peers in the industry? So it's really about deciding for yourself what is it that you are going after and how you are going after this to make sure that you capture the right users. Let's look at sample account structure. Let's take this campaign, for example. I've called it charity generics. And under charity generics, you could have various things because this is a generics campaign. You could have ad groups around fundraising, gifting, giving. Now let's take fundraising. Under fundraising, you would have keywords like charity fundraiser, fundraising charity. For gifting, you would have charity gift, charity giving, or charity gifting. Under giving, you would have charity giving and charitable giving. I have just taken a sample of keywords here. You might decide to have 10 or 15 keywords to make it more robust and to capture everything. But this is so that you get an idea of the kind of things that you're going to include in each ad group. Now, if you notice something common over here, you would see that really the ad group is reflected in the keywords, or the keywords are reflective of the ad group. And this is very important to make sure that you're theming it right, it's tightly themed, so that eventually everything is set up right for great performance in future. Now, each of these ad groups can have ad text, must have ad text. Each ad group, I would suggest to have at least three ad texts per ad group because then you're giving a chance to rotate different variations of ads to see what best resonates with your users. So that is really the co and the face of your organization. Let's look at another example. 
let's say you're running a concert or some kind of an event for your charity. I've called it ABC event. You might have tied up with some celebrity for the same and you want to call the campaign the same because you really want to capture what is it that the celebrity has got to us? What kind of impact have we had through this? Look at the ad groups. Let's say ABC Charity, ABC Help, ABC Kids because people are really interested when it comes to celebrities and important public figures where they would definitely want to know how they're associating themselves. So ABC Charity captures similar keywords like we've spoken earlier which really reflect the ad group theme. Likewise for ABC Help and ABC Kids, you need to make sure that it's reflective of the ad group and what you are talking about in that particular ad group. Again, the ad text needs to reflect the same. Let's say your organization or your brand name, rather your charity is called Serve Now. I'm just taking this as an example, but you need to make sure that you definitely have a brand campaign in your account structure. This really goes a long way because people recognize a brand over a period of time. Initially, it would just help you build your brand image and later people already know your brand. So they are definitely going to start searching for your brand. And it is important that you are there when users are searching for you. Let's say your brand is served now. The ad groups that you could have under that. Let's say serve now pure brand keywords with that. Serve now generic keywords. So if you look at the keywords that I have put under serve now brand, it's pure serve now, serve now .com. If you have any kind of website URLs, all of those can go under this ad group. Serve now generic. It's more about people associating with serve now. So serve now online, serve now donations, serve now charity. All of this can come under this particular ad group. Again, the same with the ad text. So now you should have a good overview of what a sample account looks like. It needs to comprise of your brand campaign so that you are there for the users when they're looking for your brand. It also needs to have generics because people may not really know your brand at times or they may be searching for general giving or gifting solutions and this is where you make, need to make sure that the generics campaigns exist. And then it is the events or campaigns or particular kind of uh, sessions that you're running which needs to be captured. We spoke about mirroring the website. Now when I say mirror the website, if we look at this particular website, this is just an example that I have taken, which is on humanism.org.uk. It draws three things to my attention first when you look at this slide. It talks about join, donate, it talks about the campaigns, and a detailed list of the campaigns is given far right down, if you see, in terms of secularism, equal marriage, animal welfare, and all these campaigns that this organization is talking about. Now, what you need to make sure is that you create your campaigns and ad groups around these things to capture the right messaging and making sure that you do not miss out on anything. So different people who are interested in different causes are making sure that you're reaching out to them as well. The donate option and the join option are good clues for you in terms of the goals of that website. So you need to call this out when you are going ahead and creating your ad text. Let me move ahead. Now towards the end of this, you should be able to assess the best structure for an AdWords account. And now you should be able to recall how our system settings are organized to serve a more relevant ad. It's really about making sure that you have this structure set up right so that in future it's going to help you when you go ahead and make changes or fine tune things for yourself. I have put together some resources and links that should serve as a good help guide for you. It's around account structure, campaigns and ad groups, when you're setting up campaigns, what you need to do and how you could organize your account best. Be there for our next session next week on keywords. Yes, you need to make sure that you find the right keywords that you could use, how you could research and mine for keywords. And that will set you up in terms of making sure that you have the right components for your account. Thank you so much for joining in and if you have any questions, please feel free to post it on the G Plus page. Thank you so much once again. Have a good day.